God is God whether I acknowledge him or not. Hallelujah. It just would behoove us. Hallelujah. To understand that he is. Hallelujah. And so I'm grateful for you today. And thank God for, again, uh, all of you who are here. Um, I'm really excited to see what God has to say. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, if only you knew how real and uh, interesting that comment was. Amen. 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 So um, I'm going to start off with um, we're going to pray and then and then we'll get into see what the Lord has to say. Father, we thank you right now uh, for your excellent greatness. Father, we just thank you that you are such a great and a vast God. We can't even begin to perceive and to conceive of how wonderful you are. Father, we thank you for this moment. Uh, we bless you for it right now. And Lord, we don't even take it lightly. Lord, right now, hide me behind Calvary's cross that the hearer may hear all of you and none of me. Hallelujah. I get out of your way. Do what you will in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. Amen. 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 So, OK, I'm going to be obedient and just try to listen to what God has told me to do. All right. So um, starting off with, you know, God is so amazing and interesting how he does things. Right. He told me that today he said that I and this is before I got here, that um, the atmosphere will prophesy of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm looking out before I even got a chance to look out and see what was going on. You know, God is amazing. And so I, I know that that is true. So um, whatever that means to you, uh, ask God what that means for you. Uh, hallelujah. Because there's something about how you came today. Hallelujah. Who you're with today. Uh, what you have on today. Uh, that God is saying the atmosphere will prophesy even of me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. OK, so um, I'm going to tell you this story. And then, um, Jean, you want to get started with Jean, uh, with Genesis. Look there, Jean. Jean is, Jean is in Genesis. My God. <laughs> um, we're going to go to Genesis 3 so you can get that queued up. And uh, um, I'm going to start by telling the story God told me to say. So um, I went to a spiritual retreat the other week. And I'm at this retreat, and I'm telling you, all kind of deliverance was going on. Many young people gave their lives to the Lord. It was amazing. And uh, so um, I was just excited and I was amazed. And I was seeing, we went, we had a bonfire. And around this fire, there were all these senior, uh, seniors in high school. All these are leaders that are about to go off and to do whatever God told them to do that, that God has called them to do. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm standing before, uh, basically youth that God, that God has honored me to even be before, right? Uh, that's the truth. And um, so I'm there, and so we set the fire, and there's a woman of God that said, well, we're going to put these slips of paper in the fire. These are things we're giving to God, and we're going to, to, to watch it burn. Wow, look at that. Remember we did that for Apostle John? Hallelujah. Look at that. I, just, I promise you, I just thought about that. We sure did. Hallelujah. We believe the report of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. We believe the report of the Lord. We only believe the report of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I told you, God is amazing. So anyway, we're around this fire and, and I even got something in my hand and, and I wrote down, you know, write down what you want to give to the Lord and watch it burn. And so we did that. And um, I, I mean, I, I could not have been prepared for what all I heard. Uh, stories of abuse and neglect and uh, stories of disappointment and disillusionment and all sorts of things they gave to God. They, they weren't made to give it to him. They chose to give it to him and to watch it burn. Hallelujah. And when, I don't know if you know this, but once something is burned, it no longer is. It's, 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 it's a little different from torn up. Uh, you know, it's a little different from place to the side. It's, it's a little different from sleep. It's gone, <laughs> dead and gone, right? And so uh, we watched that burn and it was amazing. And uh, as I stood there, I heard, like I said, all these stories of deliverance, I was so moved and touched. And I'm like, God, you're amazing. And so I saw this guy, I saw this young uh, gentleman that was, he wasn't by the fire. Everybody was by the fire, but this young man was not by the fire. He was on the perimeter of the fire. And so I looked over there and the Lord said, um, go over there by him. And I'm thinking, Lord, well, oh, what for? That's what I thought. I'll be honest with you. We're going to need some, some, some transparency today. Is that all right? Amen. I need you to be truthful today. As, we, as I tell these stories, think about yourself. All right? We're going to be transparent. So I said, well, God, I don't know what for. Why am I going over there? Right? 
because clearly there was a reason why he didn't want to come by the fire as the others. So the Lord said, kept nudging me, go by this young man. So finally, I go by the young man and I, and I get ready to sit down by him. Listen to this. And the, and, and the young man said, oh, no, you can have a seat. I'm going to go over here. <laughs> so I'm thinking, Lord, this is going to be awkward. Going by this young man. I don't even know this young man. But what I didn't know, God said, go over there. So I went over there, and he said, oh, no, you can, you can have this seat. Uh, I'm about to go over here. And at first I started to say, no, wait a minute. No, you don't have to do this. And then I, it dawned on me that's what God expected to happen. So he went by the fire. He went by the fire. Now, I don't know what, I, what all God did by that fire, but I have no doubt. If God was God enough to deliver all that deliverance to those students, if God was God enough to cause us to go to this camp that happened to be <laughs> Uh, founded by a woman of God that worked at this school who's only been in existence for five years. And her father founded it. And we went to this particular uh, camp because of her suggestion. If God did all of that, took us three hours to White Lake, Wisconsin. If God allowed me to go this particular time. If God did all of those things, <laughs> surely he did something that, by that fire. Yeah. Not just for the ones who willingly gave uh, to God that day, but also for the young man whom he told me something simple, a small thing. What well, small thing is God asking of you? That you're saying, well, why would I do that? That would be awkward. That doesn't make any sense. Hallelujah. All right, Genesis 3. Genesis 3. Genesis 3. Let's go to Genesis 3. And 1. Amen. Amen. You know, there is no obedience that's small. I think that's part of what can trip us up, too, is that we think, well, why do I need to do it? You know, that's not couldn't be that important if you're asking me and so on and so forth. Uh, but God says what he means and he means what he says. All right. So this first uh, verse, Genesis 3. One says, now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God has made, had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Hallelujah. Look at this uh, wicked snake. Hallelujah. He's talking to Eve, right? So he's talking to Eve. And by the way, we're talking today about obedience. Hallelujah. It's what, say, say it's what I need. It's what I need. Hallelujah. Obedience. We're talking about obedience. It's what I need. Yes. Hallelujah. And so uh, here Eve is in the garden that God set up, that God planted and put the people in, her husband and herself. And um, here comes this outsider. Say outsider. outsider. This foreigner. Yeah. Right. Here comes this foreigner. And he comes in to talk to the woman who he had no reason to be talking to. And she had no reason to be talking to. Hallelujah. Who is talking to you that has no reason to be talking to you? And you have no reason to be conversating with. Hallelujah. And so he says to this woman who was created for this man and the man who was created to be in this garden to give God glory. Here comes this old wicked serpent. And he says that to the woman. Verse 2 says, and the woman said to the serpent, why are you saying anything to the serpent? Let's start right there. Why is the woman saying anything to the serpent? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But we see she said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. Next verse. Next verse, Genesis 3, verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Yeah. Yeah. So now the woman <laughs> who's speaking with, a, um, what would you call it? He's not, he was not permitted to speak with her. He had no authority to speak to her. Uh, but in any case, she's speaking with him, and she tells him the command that God gave to Adam. She relays what her husband told her that God said, right? So, again, obedience. God is looking for obedience. So, obedience is not obedience if we filter it through our mind. Just thought I would just throw that in there for free. All right, so then it says, then the serpent said, now mind you, 
had no business talking to the serpent. Serpent had no business talking to her. But because she shared the command of God that was given to her husband, now he has an opportunity to chit-chat. We don't give the devil opportunity to chit-chat. Hallelujah. We don't give him a, a, a reason to chit-chat. Hallelujah. We're not to entertain the enemy and his conversation. At any time, if she'd have shut this down, hey, where's my husband? Adam. <laughs> it's over. It would be over. It would have been over. But she engaged in the conversation. Hallelujah. She want to talk a little bit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Now, she gave him a chance. My mother used to, you know what my mother used to say? That you, you made a person lie. <laughs> I said, Mom, I did this. He said, you, you made that person lie. But I get what she's saying. In other words, don't entertain it. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Don't even entertain it in the first place. That's what she meant, right? Yeah. So now we got the enemy who gets an opportunity to lie. He told a half truth, which is a whole lie. Yeah. All right? So then it says in verse, oh, where are we at? Five. For God knows that in the day you eat of it. Now, now he's going to speak to God's intention. <laughs> now, this is Satan who's going to talk. He, so he's the messenger of God now. He's going to tell the creation who was created by the creator what the creator's intention was for the creation. Hallelujah. He tells her, uh, wait a minute, that's not true. For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. Another half truth whole lie. Because they were already like God. They were already like God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next verse. Thank you, Jesus. Obedience. We must obey. We must not give the enemy even a chance to tell the lie. How do you know the enemy is lying? When he opens up his mouth? Nothing he says is going to be true. I wrote it down somewhere in my notes. Uh, here's the thing. How can the enemy talk about the intention of God? It's somewhere in here. How can the enemy talk about the intention of God? <laughs> How can he talk about the nature of God? He lies about both. God's intention was not uh, to keep something from Adam and Eve. His intention was for them to live and not die. That's why he said what he meant and he meant what he said. Hallelujah. He says, for, again, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, uh, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Go ahead to the next verse. Verse 6. We're going to go to the next verse. And it says, and when the woman saw the tree, that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of the fruit and ate. She also gave it to her husband with her and he ate. All right. So we could talk all day about this particular thing. And this is a very familiar uh, passage of scripture. We already know that um, Eve was deceived. She wouldn't have been deceived if she had closed her mouth, though. But she was deceived, right? And, and, and uh, Adam, who had the command, was given the command and was the responsible party, uh, he rebelled because he knew what God said and chose to do something different, right? So regardless, we sinned here. We sinned here. We sinned here. And this is the thing we're trying to get the world to understand that it's not about how good of a person you are. It, when the first man sinned, you sinned. You were conceived in sin. We were born in sin, right? So that's the answer for those who say, well, I have this particular preference and I've got this particular situation and, you know, God made me that way. One thing about it, one thing about it, we were born in sin. Hallelujah. There's a lot of things our flesh wants to do. Our flesh wants to reign, doesn't it? Of course it does. Of course it does. That's, I don't care who you are, your flesh wants to reign. Hallelujah. It has to be filtered through the spirit. Subject. We have to tell our flesh what to do. The flesh does not tell us what to do. All right. So even in this situation, uh, just wanted to show you that even at the beginning, he was a liar. 
From the beginning, Satan was a liar. From the beginning, he told these, he manipulated the truth. He's a deceiver. He's not only a liar, but he's the father of lies. That's important for us to understand. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's not just that he's a liar. It's that he is the father of lies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't need to listen to a liar. So today, I just believe God wanted us to focus on the fact that uh, we must obey. Say, we must obey. Okay, the Lord said, make it personal. Say, I must obey. I'll say it too. I must obey. Let's say it again. I must obey. One more time. I must obey. Okay, so this is what we say often. I don't know what God wants. I don't know what God wants. Well, there are a couple things. It can either be true or it can be a lie that we don't know what God wants. Either way, we don't get off the hook, you see. Because if we don't know what he wants, that means we have not gotten into his face to ask him. Or it means that we are still unregenerate and have not given our lives to him so that we will understand what his instruction is for our life. There's only a couple of outcomes here. <laughs> the other one is that we just don't do it. We know it, but we just don't do it. Hear me. We know it, but we just won't do it. We know it, but we just don't do it. Then there's another group who are doing it. They're doing the will of God. There are three groups. It's funny. God keeps telling me it's three groups you're talking to. Either you don't know what the true will of God is for your life, which means you need to bow and ask him for the old instructions, or we do know what his will is for our life, and we are not doing it, or we are doing it. Here's the thing. We don't need to know all the way to Z what God is saying in order to obey. That's a word. Hallelujah. If God says, I want you, and he puts it in your heart, you need to go back to school. You need to, you need to do this. He may not tell you all of the details. But we don't wait for all of the details to proceed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, there's this story. I was watching this uh, movie, and it's so crazy because I said, okay, God, do I use this as an example? Um, I heard one time somebody say, you know, when it comes to, you ask God, well, what dress do I wear? Uh, you, know, uh, th you know, that can be religious. You don't need to know what dress to wear. And, you know, but I do believe this. I do believe that God has a reason for details. We may not know the answer for why he says a thing. So that's why it's important to be guided by him. So I'm going to tell you a story about something that seems like it makes no sense to tell you. Because who rolls down the window anymore in the car? You remember that? Some of us in the room, we remember. You had to roll down. In fact, you had to reach over and roll down, right? If you didn't have enough money, you just had to get the thing. All right, so in this one movie that I watched, this man was given a, I don't know what it's called. I'm going to call it a thingamajig. The thingamajig that rolls down the window, right? And he was given that, and he was told to keep that in this movie. And uh, so he had it amongst his things, and it didn't even seem to be important. Like, it was just, why am I walking around with this thing until the day that he fell off of the cliff in the car? Hallelujah. Yeah. And he was submerged in water. And guess what he needed to do to get out? Use that thingamajig to roll down the window to get out. It wouldn't be interesting if that's the way God was, where he told you what to put in your pocket and to put inside of you. So at just the right moment, you can use your thingamajig to escape. Wouldn't it be something if that's the way the Lord works? And he does. <laughs> I want to say this. So we have people in the room with linguistic skills. They, 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 they had no languages. So I'm hoping that somebody here knows different, a, a way to say the word now. Okay, in a different language. Okay, there's some, several of you. All right, the, the, raise your hand if you know what the word now means in another language. Okay, I got Paul, I got Maria, I got Alexia. Ha ha, three! Yes, hold on to that. Don't let me forget it. All right, so um, 
this is amazing, you all. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So um, your obedience is your defense and your offense. Paul. Obedience. It is your defense and your offense. Right? It's both. When you play basketball, it seems like two very different things because the shooter, that, that's the offense. You need those. You got to make the points. But then you have the defense. You need the defense because they have to block while you're going out there. But see, God wants us to obedience is both. Not only is it your defense, but it is also your offense. All right. Um, it is the protection of God. This is what when we're in our flesh, we don't understand. Obedience is your protection from God. Because what happens is when you filter it through your mind, these things seem right. You know what I mean? Well, God, why can't I do it this way? See, his law is there to protect. We think it's there to restrict, but it protects in its restriction. <laughs> it protects even in its restriction. All right? And obedience there is a life that God wants for us. It is the life of God. Go to 2 Timothy 4, 3. 2 Timothy 4 and 3. And we're going to go uh, also verse 4 there. 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy 4 and 3. Hallelujah. All right. It says here, for the time will come. When they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. Sounds like today. It sounds like today. Okay, go to the next verse. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. The Lord wants us to know that in this hour, in order to not be destroyed in order to not fall into disobedience. We must obey. We must obey. He is not interested in us knowing myths and fables. He's not interested in us taking, being taken over by deceit and deception and delusion, which is what happens when we do not obey. So this is why he's telling us in these end times, there will be many people that will be drawn away to teachers that say what they want to hear. Okay, so we have to be careful of that. Um, let's look at Hebrews 4 and 12. Hebrews 4 and 12. Hebrews 4 and 12. Talks about the word of God. Hebrews 4 and 12. You know, Hebrews talks about a better covenant. That we have a better, did you know that you have a better covenant, covenant than e even those before you? Uh, even those who came before Jesus Christ? Did we know that? So Hebrews 4 and 12 is here. So it says, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides. It divides to that degree, even to the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hallelujah. So what that lets us know is... <laughs> God's word, it is our mirror. It's the way by which we know what to do, right? Sometimes you can have the right motive and use the wrong means and vice versa, right? I wrote down somewhere in here about that. Um, a big thing that God wants us to take away out of our life is pride. Uh, that was Satan's problem. Satan wanted... <laughs> He didn't want to be a creature, a creature. He wanted to be the creator. He didn't want to be a servant of God. He wanted to be God. He didn't want to serve in the kingdom. He wanted to be the master of the kingdom. So listen to this. It, isn't it interesting? 
sometimes what we call fear is really pride. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes what we think is fear is really pride. So if someone were to say, well, why are you not doing what the calling of God is on your life? Well, I'm scared. Well, are we scared to do it? Or, or is it that we think we know better than God? We think, well, God, you want me to do this. And I understand that. That's, that's okay. But I will not be comfortable doing that. I don't have what it takes to do that. I have done, made some mistakes, and, and that's not going to produce a good result for me doing that. But see, God didn't ask you to tell him what's in you. Newsflash, he put it in you. Hallelujah. He doesn't need you to help him to do what he told you to do. He's the one who told you to do it. He put it in your heart to do it. So who are you to tell the God of everything yeah. that I can't do it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the Lord gave me. He said, um, who told you you were naked? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody's excuse is I'm naked. I can't do it. Yeah. I know you called me to preach, but I, 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 I made some mistakes. Mm -hmm. I feel like a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. I've done this. I've done that. Yeah. I've said this. I've said that. The Lord is not concerned with that. He, in fact, he's not changing his mind by what he said. He meant what he said, and he said what he meant. However, there is no excuse. And the, the Lord is saying the issue is not fear. The issue is pride. You think you know better than me. Who told you you were naked? If we had to follow that thought, we'd have to say, Satan. Oh, so we listening to Satan today. What did I say? What did I say? Who told you you were naked? Where'd you get that from? Who put that in your heart? Who told you that lie? Where did that insecurity come from? Who's giving you that recurring thought? Who's giving you that recurring dream or nightmare? Who's telling you that night and day? You're not good enough. You're not good enough. You should have never been saved. You ain't saved. Look how you're thinking. Look how you feel. A saved man wouldn't be like that. How do you ain't saved? Look at that mistake you made. Look at that word you said. He's an accuser of the brethren. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. That's not even your thought. That's, that's the enemy. We give him credit for things he has no right, didn't do, and then we do the reverse, too. That's nothing but the enemy. The Lord has already made provision for that whom that which he calls. Let's go to 1 Samuel. Let's go to 1 Samuel. I know it's further down. 15, 23. 1 Samuel 15, 23. Pride says, I'm going to do it my way. You might know better, but I'm going to do it my way. Imagine telling a heart surgeon, you know, I know that maybe I should be eating differently. And I know that you're telling me that I've got this percentage of block in my artery, but I'm, I, I just believe that I, I know better in this situation. Uh, I'm going to do it my way. What kind of outcome could that give? There's one who knows, and there's one who believes. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 Samuel 15, 23. We're going to look at that. It says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Stay right there. We're talking about Saul now. Saul was anointed king. Was told to do some things. I want you to utterly destroy the Malachites. I don't want you to take anything. I, I, not even the king should be spared. Yeah. That's what God said. Yes. Yes. But Saul said, well, you know, um, hmm, okay, God, uh, I know, I know that that's what you said, but, uh, butter, um, <laughs> butter, um, Jesus, uh, I think that I want to do it differently. What makes us want to do it differently? I'll tell you, the one we talked about in Genesis 3. 
He wanted to do it differently. I want to do it a different. I, see, I'm trying to say this so you can put yourself in it and I can put myself in it. Lord, I know you said this, but, uh, you know, I know this shortcut. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, I know you said to go straight, mm -hmm. but I know a real nice path uh -huh. that that take me almost like straight It is sort of it's in a circle. Yeah. It is a circle, but it's sort of it'll get me there. That's what we think when we get off. That's what we think when we're in disobedience. Yes. I know you said it this way, but I can get there. I just need to go in an alternate path. Yes. Jesus, uh -huh. he's not interested in our alternate path. Yes. God told Saul a thing to do. Yes. Saul wanted to do it his way. Yes. I did it my way, somebody saying. You did it your way. And what came of it? You were rejected, utterly rejected from being king. That's what happened to Saul. All right. So we have, in order to obey God, we can't do it our way. We can't see it, see another path. I'm imagining a, no, you don't need to imagine anything. Except what God said. You don't need to envision anything except what God said. That's it. Okay. So sin rejects, when we sin, we're rejecting God's instructions. We put ourselves as ruler over our own lives. The, the verse that I spoke of before, it says stubbornness. It talked about stubbornness. It said, uh, it's talked about uh, rebellion and it talked about stubbornness. Yeah. And it basically compared it to witchcraft right. and idolatry right. and iniquity. Right. Idolatry, putting something above God. Mm -hmm. See, we think that means a car, a Maserati, yeah. a Jaguar, right? Uh, uh, you know, yeah. a friend. It, it's whatever. Right. We pick as the thing to put above God. Stubbornness, I'm going to tell you what Miriam Webster says about stubbornness. It is the dogged determination not to change one's attitude or position on something. I'm going to say that again. Stubbornness. It is the dogged determination not to change one's attitude or position on something. What are we stubborn about? God says obey. Obey your rulers. Obey your parents in the Lord. Hallelujah. Obey me. The dogged determination not to change one's attitude or position. Seditions. That says incitement or resistance to or insurrection against lawful authority. That's what sedition is. Right? Not following lawful authority. This is how we get to obedience. Because somebody said, how did I get here? Say it with me. How did I get here? Disobedience. Disobedience. Present company included. Whenever I was wrong, it's because of that. Dogged determination not to change my position about something. Did you know rebellion? It means to behave in an unacceptable way and not do what you're told. Rebellious. Youth. Listen. Rebellious means to behave in an unacceptable way and do not do what you are told. You know, Satan rebelled from Jesus and God. And you know what he did? He did so in such a way <laughs> and, and, and deceived some angels. And guess what? They had to go with him too. He told them, well, I'm God. Serve me. Right. And um, so they fell with him. And really, it's kind of funny because we say that Satan failed. Jesus said in Luke, he said in Luke, uh, was it 10? He said that I saw Satan, Luke 10, 18 and 19. Luke 10, 18 and 19. He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. So for those of us who want to listen to Satan, you have lost. Your leader has lost. Well, why would you call my leader? Because either you're either led by God or you're led by Satan. There, there is no in between. And that's the greatest lie ever told. You're either led by God or by Satan. So today, if you, <laughs> I, I want you to be clear. There's only two kingdoms and there are only two <laughs> rulers of those kingdoms. We're either led by God or we're led by Satan. Simple as that. 
Uh, unchecked desire causes disobedience. Unchecked desires. Unchecked desires. See, unchecked desires, they seep in and they cause deception and they cause disobedience. It leads to the rejection that we talked about in 1 Samuel. Saul was utterly uh, rejected of God because he chose not to follow the instructions of God. I want to move it along. James 1, 14 and 15. I'm going to tell you what it says. It says, but every man is tempted. James 1, 14 James 1, 14 through 15, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. That's what I mean. Unchecked desires, right? Unchecked desires. Unchecked desires. Desires that God did not give. Desires that we want. God, I want what I want when I want it. I want it. I want it. I want it. We have to want, we want, we have to want God more than we want what we want. How about that? We got to want God more than we want what we want. Right. Otherwise, we're drawn away by our own lusts. Obedience. God is asking for obedience. Obedience is a command of God. Yes. Isaiah 1 and 19 it tells us it tells us that um, we'll eat of the good of the land if we are willing and obedient. That's right. If you're willing and obedient, you shall eat of the good of the land. That's what it says. Obedience is a command. It prevents disobedience and sin. It is the protection of God and it is the life of God. Life of God. Yes. It is the life of God. God gives us weapons. I often find myself talking about the weapons of the enemy to let the people of God know this is what Satan uses. And then there's the weaponry of God. Yeah. Things like praise. Yeah. Things like prayer. Mm -hmm. Things like obedience. Mm -hmm. On the other side, the enemy, pride, lust, deception, sin. Right. Just sin, because sin rejects God's instructions and it puts ourselves as ruler over our own lives. We were never meant to be rulers of our own lives. Hallelujah. We were never meant. We were never meant. Um, so there are a couple of things that God also is sharing with us. He wants us to know that there are those who are struggling with obedience and that's why we're not where we want to be. So that's why we're, if we're struggling in the area of obedience, that's why we are not where we would like to be. We're not getting the favorable outcome because we have not what, done what God has told us to do. Now, what, what has God told us to do? I was thinking about it. Sister Maria was called up to do the confession today. What some people might not know is she doesn't typically do the confession. Maria doesn't typically do the confession. So because of that, when she was called today, I watched her. She got, it was kind of like a shock a little bit. She stood up in her shoes a little bit higher. Well, oh, And then I could just see all over her face the acceptance. She was, she was told that you're doing something. She really wasn't asked to do something, see. She was commanded to do something. And I saw her first. It was like, ooh. And then all of a sudden. I saw her literally stand up in her shoes and she came up and she began to speak. And as she spoke, what I noticed was the people of God that had to repeat what she said, that to listen a little more carefully because they were used to someone else giving the cadence. Someone else normally said those same words. So we had to listen. OK, what is she? And you know what helped me listen? I quieted myself and I didn't even look at what was on the board. I just simply listened to her voice. Yeah. I simply listened to her voice. It helped me out. Yeah. Right? Because both were true. The words on the board were true, just as well as her voice was true. Right. But I chose to just listen to her voice. And then it helped me say the kids, because I said it just like she said it. I repeated it exactly the way she said it. Yeah. This is helping somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because the written word is, is, is it. The logos is true. His spoken word is true. So I don't care if you got to speak it and not look right now for a moment to hear what God is saying, or if you got to look and not hear, whatever it takes, but we need to obey. Say, I need to obey. I need to obey. Okay, because again, obedience is our offense and defense. And so we obey without an understanding at times. You don't have to know everything. It sets us up for miracles. It works to the betterment of all. It prevents deception. This way we can keep God's precepts and standards. 
It requires trust and full dependency on God. Oh, that's why it's troubling. That's why it can be troubling. Because I might have to do some things I might not want to do. I might have to give up some things that I don't want to give up. I might have to go away that seems a little more difficult, seems a little bit more taxing. I might have to let go of some people. I might have to let go of some things. I might have to let go of some strongholds in my own mind. I have to let go of some lies that the devil has told. You know, we can be trained by God or we can be trained by Satan. And if you're trained by your flesh, it's the same thing. Right? So in training, the kids do track now. So I watch them, right? And so you don't start getting ready for a track meet <laughs> the day of. That's not quite how it works. Because you have to be trained. So what does that mean? That means... When other people are eating Krispy Kreme, I might be eating a different diet. When other people are sleeping, I might be at the track running. Right? When other people are doing something else, I have to be at practice. I have to be listening to my coach. I have to get my form right. You might even do well in a race, and if your form isn't right, the coach might still tell you, that was nice, but you got to get that form right. See, we don't know what the coach has to say. But he knows what's needed to win the race. Yes. Okay, God knows what is needed to win the race. And it is our obedience. Yes. It's unadulterated obedience. Yes. It is all the way obedience. Because I told you, there is no half obedience. There is no delayed obedience. That's called disobedience. <laughs> that is called disobedience. We have to focus on the voice of God all week long. All week long, I've been listening to a real small snippet of a lady. She was praising God. And you know what she was saying the whole time? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Keep your eyes on 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 Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. He's your everything. He's your everything. He's your everything. He's your everything. Right? It wasn't... You know, to somebody else, that doesn't sound profound. But you get yourself in a, in a certain place. I bet you you can go right back to that, and that'd be all you need. Keep your eyes on Jesus. 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 Focus on Jesus. Focus on, and all week, I've been thinking, okay? Focus, I'm going to focus on, that's, that's what it's about. It's about obedience. We're not using fear as an excuse anymore for rebellion. We're no longer going to be taken up in pride. We're no longer going to tell God what's best for us. We're no longer going to look and say, you know, I'm naked. Lord, I'm naked. Who told you you're naked? Who told you that you were naked? It's the enemy that tells us that. So that's a lie. Everybody said that's a lie. Everybody said that Satan is a liar. And he's the father of lies. So when these things come to your mind, don't, you'll be clear. I hear somebody say, well, I, I'm, I was just confused. That's a lie. There's no reason to be confused. There is no reason to be confused. We're confused when we're trying to get around what God said. Simple as that. He makes it very plain. God wants us to know that uh, truth is available. Psalm 32 and 5. Put up Psalm 32 and 5. I want to tell you this, because I'm not going to get to all these scriptures, but I'm going to give them because you might want to do it. Uh, read these in your study time. Zechariah 7, 11 and 12. Write that down. Zechariah 7, 11 and 12. If you need to see me later, that's fine. I'll give them to you again. What it talks about is uh, uh, the Lord talks about how the fathers, they didn't listen. <laughs> uh, that he gave them some answers, but they refused to listen. Proverbs 11 and 2. It talks about how pride goes. Uh, with shame, with shame in that one. In Proverbs 16 and 18, it says, pride goeth before destruction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Proverbs 18 and 12, it talks about, or in two, before, it talks about before a man's downfall, he's arrogant. And then it says, but humility precedes honor. Psalm 32 and 5. This is what it says. I acknowledge my sin to you, and my iniquity have not, I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin, said I. 
right here. This is what I, this is the remedy. This is why we have it up. This is the remedy. This is the remedy right here. This is the remedy. Hallelujah. This is the remedy. Hallelujah. Somebody, what did you say earlier? This is the remedy. How did I get here? This is the remedy. How did this get, thing get off the track? We say all kinds. How did the train get off the track? This is how. This is how you remedy that situation. We all have different situations, see? We all do. But this is still the remedy. It's Jesus. Jesus is the remedy. See, Jesus did what he needed to do. He's not dying anymore. He died and he rose. And he's not dying anymore. And now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercessions for us. He's completed his work. He's done all that he's ever need, needed to do. It's done. Hallelujah. So now it's just our part. And it's to freely receive, although it wasn't free to him. It's free to you. It was not free to him. Hallelujah. There was nothing free about that death. There was nothing free about that death. Hallelujah. It cost him everything. It cost him everything to give you everything and to make available to you everything. Hallelujah. It cost him everything to give you everything. Hallelujah. It cost everything. Hallelujah. But it's free to you. It's free to us. Hallelujah. And then First John says it this way. If you will confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sin and to cleanse you from all righteousness. So the answer to this is obedience. And how do we do it by this? Acknowledging Acknowledging it before the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because we can't hide it. Right. We can't hide it. Right. Did you know that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak? Yes. We all know what we think. Uh -huh. it, because it comes out of our mouth. It, it, that's why we have to guard our mouth and our lips. Yeah. Hallelujah. And our, our lips. Uh, we, we will not use pretense and say that we don't understand anymore say I will not use pretense and the lack of understanding to not obey and then there's one more one more group that um, God is speaking to he wants you to know that this did not this the person the people know who they are this did not happen as a result of your sin I'm saying this to Job's this not, did not happen as a result of your sin. Why did Job go through? Because he was a man who was blameless, who shunned sin. The greatest man, man in all of us. Right? And because God had enough confidence in him to actually make a suggestion to Satan. Because you see, Satan came before the throne and he came along with the men, and men of God. And uh, God said, well, Satan, what, where were you? Oh, I'm just going all through the earth. And uh, he, he said, well, you know, have you considered my servant Job? So there are some Jobs that I'm speaking to now at this moment. The, the other time, we all know where we are and which of those three groups we are. But to the Jobs, it was not because of sin. It's because God wants to get the glory out of your life. However, we still have to make the right confession. Okay, so Job hung there. Friends came to him. So far, right? Yeah. Bill Dad. They came to him and they told him. All, now, they were good at first. See, your friends, for a while, they, they might be all right. Yeah. Yeah. For seven days, they knew to shut their mouths. Yeah. Seven whole days. And then. But why did they shut their mouths? Because of, uh, they saw the grief and the, so much pain that, that Job was overwhelmed with the pain. So that's why they kept quiet. But finally, they had to say what they thought. Yeah. Somebody got to tell you what they think. I don't think you should have to stay with him. I mean, y'all problems are too difficult. Maybe you need to go. You know, you were good while you were quiet. Supporting and sitting there. Go, with, go to God with me. Right? Let's, let's see what God has to say. But no, no, no. After seven days, I have to tell you what I think. It's time for me to speak my mind. Yeah. <laughs> and they did. It caused Job probably more grief. Right? But at the end of the day, Job came out. And guess what he came out with? Did he have less? No, of course. Twice as much. 
Why? Because he lost his family, his health, his possessions. But at the end of the day, somebody say at the end of the day. Uh, we'll put this up and then I'm going to close. Uh, Job's repentance. If you look at, pull up Job 42, verse 12. Verse 12. Because the devil wants to tell you, well, you lost everything. Uh, you know. In fact, the devil got in, his, in Job's wife and said, you might as well curse God and, and die. Yes. Just go and curse God and die. Yeah. Right? Yes. Uh, but what did Satan say in times past? Curse God and die. Just go to curse God. Right? If you listen, you you've survived if you didn't curse God and didn't die. Some of us just need to outlast the devil. Because it, it happened, uh, so much happened at once. It wasn't just one blow, it's a thousand blows at the same time. See, that's what some, some of us go through. But let's look at Job, looking at Job 42. Job 42, uh, verse 12. I want to show you this, and we're going we're gonna to close out, but not before we put the people in the front to tell us about this, this word. So prepare yourself. I want to say this too, right in your notes, Ephesians 4, 18, it talks about uh, darkened in understanding and being alienated from the life of God. God has a life for us. We don't need to be alienated from the life of God and we don't need to be darkened. The Lord has called us to be light, salt and light, not to be darkened. Amen. Okay. So 42, 12, six. so this is your end. If you're obedient, this is your end. Hallelujah. If you're, I'll say that again. Somebody not happy. If you're obedient, this is your end. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. In the Bible, it says Job's former, uh, in the headings, it says something like Job's uh, former, th you know, things that he's done. Job's former this. Job's former. But now we get into the latter. This is the end of the story. This is your prophecy. It's not before it's this. If we are obedient. Hallelujah. You ready, Kena? It says, now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. Yes. For he had 14,000 sheep. Wow. 6,000 camels and 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 female donkeys. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. See, the devil told the lie that, oh, he's taking everything from you. Curse God and die. But Job, not only did he recover, not only was he restored, hallelujah, not only did he just recover, because some of you are asking, Lord, help me recover. Lord, help me to restore. Hallelujah, because the Lord already said he's going to restore the years that the canker worm and the locusts have eaten. He's going to do that already. But he wants to give you more. He wants to give you abundance. Hallelujah. He wants it to be to the overflow, to the full running over. Hallelujah. So that you are a testimony before men. Hallelujah. So that you are a testimony before men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that you are a testimony before men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we can't obey. We can't obey. We can't obey. Are you sure? You can't obey. Yes. I bet you want to overcome. Mm -hmm. That's another O word, overcome. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We may overcome if we obey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So no longer make the exception. Well, I'm going to make, okay, God, I know you said that, but uh, I want to make an exception. I want to I wanna make a, 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 an outside plea. No, we're not doing that. We're, we're going to trust God. We're going to trust him fully. We're going, to, we're going to commit fully to this thing. Okay, the people that have the word that I told you, please come to the front. There should be three. Three people. Alexia, you're one. Paul, you were one. Okay, Gene's going to go for him. Now, I couldn't have made this up. I, I want you to see when he gets up here what's on his shirt. All right, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Thank you, Jesus. God got away. I promise you, I was calling Paul. I promise you, I was calling Paul. Now, I want you to see something. Matter of fact, I just saw something. Come back. Come back a little bit. I hope the camera gets this. Come over here, fearless. Come over here, fearless. Okay. Now, I, I'm not going to point out to you quite yet that 
We got people up here. Now look at them. Okay, so they're going to give us a word in just a minute. Uh, I want to point out to you that Maria, I know it's a fashion show, Maria, but Maria has on a shirt. Apostle Penny, are those tassels? Those are tassels. Apostle Penny, what are tassels for? Graduation. Graduation. <laughs> Promotion. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Next level. All right. All right. Lord have mercy. <laughs> the Lord said, I will prophesy. He said, the atmosphere will prophesy. He did it. Over here, we got Alexia. She's got on gold. Just like her apostle. Look at that. Divinity. Divinity. Then we got G. Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Who I said Paul, but Paul's busy because Paul is working. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Paul is working. Yeah. Matter of fact, Paul works all the time. Yeah. He does, you know, he. It's amazing, you know. Sometimes God just wants us to be in the service, just to do what's needed. And then those people are often not right in the front. Sometimes they're in the back. But what did God say about the front and the back? Yeah, he's going to take people from the back and bring them to the front. Hallelujah. Those who appear to be covered, he will put them on display because of their heart for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are two people in the building who are together. They are married. They are together. Hallelujah. You just need to know that you're married and you're together. That's all. Hallelujah. God placed you together and you're married. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And you will remain together. Hallelujah, because God put you together. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Life comes from togetherness. Thank you, Jesus. Life comes from togetherness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Brandy's over there sporting green. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what green is. Okay. All right. So these three people are going to tell us when we need to begin to obey. She want a green, what green? Uh, wealth. Wealth, the wealth of God. <laughs> Hallelujah, the wealth of God. White is purity. Yes. Hallelujah, some of us have on a covering. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, the Lord is covering you yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. All right, so these three people are going to tell us when we need to obey. For those of us who, we, you've got to get it now because you're going to hear it in several languages. All right, Alexia, when do we obey? She's going to say Spanish, I already know. Say that like, oh, where, where's the mic? Maria has the mic. And why does Maria have the mic? Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord continues to say he will amplify your voice. The Lord has said that he is passing that to you. Hallelujah. And that you will be able to speak on demand. That you will say the things that God will have you to say. You will know what to say in the selfsame hour. Hallelujah. You will glorify him with your mouth. And your praise takes you into his throne room. And he loves to hear you praise. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And not only are you blessed, but the, you blessed, but the fruit of your womb is blessed. Hallelujah. They shall speak with the enemy at the gate, and they, are, they will cause darts and great darkness to the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. That they were jewels in God's kingdom, and they shall do what God has them to do. Hallelujah. That they are people of excellence. And just as it was back in the days of Daniel, they will not eat. The, the, the people's diet, but they will eat the diet that the Lord gives. Hallelujah. And the Lord's countenance will be upon them. Hallelujah. And great will be their peace. And great will be those just as a result of them coming into their lives. In Jesus' name. Now we're ready. Alexia, does she have, you got the microphone? Hallelujah. The Lord says he's coming. Hallelujah. And he has given you a voice for you to speak. In Jesus' name. All right. When are we going to obey? I order. I order. I order. We will, we will obey on I order. Now, I, I hope you know what Paul told you. I hope you know what Paul, because I can't help you with that, that language. Paul, tell him again. Do you need Paul to tell you? Because sometimes we need instruction. Oh, he knows. All right, Gene, what, 
When are we going to obey? Todos los días. Todos los días. All the days. That's in Spanish again. Was that what you were going to say, Paul? All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Maria, when are we going to obey up, Maria? Ngayon. Ngayon. Okay, now we're going to do this again. We're all going to say it in all these languages. Because you're making a confession today, I promise you. God's going to hold you to it. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. We go, okay. Now we're going to say it in all these. I want to hear you, even if you have your mask on. All right, we will obey. Aura. Aura. In Jesus' name. All right, now we're going to say it with we will obey when, Gene? <laughs> we will obey when? <laughs> Todos los días. Todos los días in Jesus' name. Give to Maria. How, all three of them got the mic today. You see that? <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, Maria. Wait, 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 wait. Get ready. Get ready. Everybody, you need to say it. We will obey when, Maria? Nayon. Nayon. <laughs> In Jesus' name. In Thank, Jesus. You, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I just want to, uh, I came to tell you today, really, it, it's really important that some of us are saying, well, I don't know what God wants uh, me to do. And some of us are saying, well, I, 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 I don't know how to really do. The, the answer is obedience. I've given you the scriptures. Hallelujah. I encourage you. Hallelujah. Because it's true, God has shown a light of truth in here today to cause us to know where we are, which group we fall in. Hallelujah. And now, we're going to obey when? Now. now. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 What a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. God knows exactly what we need. Amen. So we thank God for Minister Erica and that beautiful word from the Lord. It's really for us. Amen. Hallelujah that he's speaking to us. So just stretch out your hand towards the Minister Erica. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. Restore that vibe to the left. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless your name, Lord God, that we are in a different place right now. Hallelujah. As a result of your word, as a result of you opening up the scriptures to us, Lord, we thank you that we will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. We're going to worship the Lord right now with our communion uh, before the Lord. Amen. We thank God. We thank God. Hallelujah. Just giving us the opportunity to be able to hear his word. Hallelujah. And, and tell us that there's something for us. We just obey. And that there's a turnaround. I'm just like that. The anointing for thousands. Thousands. Amen. The Lord restoring. Amen. And so on the night that the Lord Jesus Christ um, was betrayed, he did take bread Amen. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my broken body. Hallelujah. He also took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood that is poured out for many. Amen. So every time we come, we take the bread and we take the cup. It's a miracle time. Hallelujah. The Lord is already working. We're already working in that obedience. So we're going to bless and take it together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for the broken body of Jesus Christ and its effect in our lives. We thank you that we are healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. We are expecting right now. And we receive everything that you have for us. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that was poured out for us. Father, we thank you that we are out of the cause and we are in the blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. We can take together the bread. Hallelujah. See, every trouble melt away in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. You can take the cup together in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We do want to give a people who, who need to receive Jesus Christ to be the Lord of their lives. And as we're going, doing uh, their prayer, I'm going to ask uh, Paul, uh, not Paul, Joe and Tavan to get ready to just do a greeting to us. Amen. But we praise the Lord. Amen. For just This is the season to be in the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Number one, obedience is to step in into Christ and let the doors open. And so let's pray this prayer together. Dear Lord, I thank you that you died on the cross for me and you resurrected the third day. I repent of my ways that did not please you. I come back to you and I ask you to come into my life. I make you Lord over my life from this day forth in Jesus' name. I reject Satan and all his demons and I make you the Lord and Savior of my life. Now Heavenly Father, fill me up with your Holy Spirit to the overflow that I might live every day above sin in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah if you pray that prayer for the first time your name is written in the book of life and you just cause a celebration in heaven amen hallelujah welcome to the family of the Lord welcome to the kingdom of God amen we're just gonna uh, you know direct you to uh, be in a Bible believing church amen so you can grow and be taught of the Lord so we thank God for that in the name of Jesus hallelujah so father we thank you we bless your name for today as I am speaking uh, Tavana and um and Joe, you can come forward. Amen. God's going to bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you that all the burdens have gone over. Amen. Hallelujah. That we will never be deceived by a liar. Hallelujah. We reject all the words of the enemy from this day forth. In Jesus' name, that we are in a new place. Hallelujah. And this is our planting of the Lord. And we thank you for what he has done today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to ask you to um, just do, you know, greet us. I'm going to wipe this off for you. Whoa. I got to wait for the mic because we got to hear you. <laughs> Morning. Uh, we're just happy to be uh, in the house with family and uh, appreciate that word and encouragement. Yeah, Minister Erica, uh, as Joe said, uh, you know, we honor our leaders. Diddy, we honor you. We honor you, Mom. We're just happy to be here with all of you. Um, y'all family, we love y'all, and every time it's a pleasure to be in the presence with you all. Uh, Minister Erica, that message was on point. It was an on-time word, and just God bless you for that. Um, obedience now. Obedience is better than sacrifice, so I'm just holding on to that and taking that with me. So we just are glad to be here. <laughs> Thank you for your prayers and, and everything. We can feel them when we're far away working, but um, it's good to be back here. <laughs> Thank you. They surprised me, and it was a good surprise. So. <laughs> a good surprise so we thank God for that amen let us stand on your feet as we um, just finalize today it's just been an awesome time before the Lord amen and the same word that you gave to Maria the Lord actually just you know you spoke it I heard it yesterday that is no more waiting for you hallelujah and I saw us doing the so get ready be prepared for your place amen One minute. Amen. One minute. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. I just want to give a testimony concerning with my, my uh, two girls. Uh, for a couple, you know, uh, Thursday, I believe that, you know, they got into um, a heat of words of hurting words that came out of their mouth. And it was so bad that I just handed it to the Lord and I gave it up you know I said Lord this is not you know it's not tolerated in my house devil you're a lie so as you know days went by I asked the, you know um, I talked to both of the girls and I told them I said you know what was said is not true you know that's a lie the devil is a lie and so um it was the Friday and Saturday um, we had uh, um, invited to the the prayer uh, summit with uh, Pastor Brenda and so I was able to go and she had asked me to praise dance and the Lord had just showed me um, 
people was telling me that they were seeing fire. And during that time, and then I just was just giving it all to the Lord and the things that's been going on in the house. And so he had showed me, which the fire, the, you know, the people was telling me, Lord said, I'm burning everything that's been, that's been going on. Everything. So I sat at, uh, yesterday, so when the summit was done, I went home. And I was sitting down and eating at the table. And Sarah came down, knew he was, they still wasn't talking. Mind you not, they was not. They said they weren't. They don't like each other anymore. They don't even, couldn't stand each other in the same house. But I just went on, I said, I will not uh, entertain the enemy. So I continue to, kept thanking the Lord. I said, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the things you're already doing in my house. So Sarah came down and she was asking me some, you know, mom, do you have, you know, like, uh, we have something to eat? And I said, yeah, sure. There's a lot of food in that freezer. <laughs> and so Nui was on the other side. So we was, me and Sarah was talking. Mind you now, I, I'm just, me and Sarah was just talking. Here comes Nui around the corner. Took Sarah and grabbed her and looked at her sister in the eye and said, Sarah, I am so sorry for the things that I said to you. That is none of that stuff that I said to you is true. You know, I love you. You are my sister. I love you so much. And it's just like, when I saw that, I just like, tears just flowed and I just got up and then Sarah said the same thing Nui you know you are my sister and I'm so sorry for the things I said to you I love you Nui I know you care for me and I just thank the Lord for the things that he's doing the love the love that he just continued to show he is <laughs> he's the one he's the only one that can fix things because I gave it to him I, Lord I said only you can fix this Lord I give it all to you and I am obeying and I said Lord for this Friday and Saturday I am going I said Lord I'm going to praise you with all my heart I'm giving it all to you and when I came home that Saturday he answered my prayer and Lord he fixed it for me and that's it <laughs> oh. glory to God yes oh God hallelujah Hallelujah, we are done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Even Father, we just thank you for Maria and the family, Lord God, and the anointing that is flowing even right now in that house in the name of Jesus, and that your fire is even working right now and your love is taking over. Father, we thank you. We cannot wait to see. Hallelujah. The promotion that you have given already, Father, in the name of Jesus. We just give you glory and we give you praise. And even right now, we just bless the congregation in the name of Jesus. May the peace of the Lord our God be upon you today. May his countenance be upon you. May his name be upon you today and do you good in the name of Jesus and may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore amen greet somebody with the love of Christ hallelujah God bless.